another month, another chance to give a big, big thank you to some of those wonderful viewers who continue to send me stuff. And uh, I got some really, really big thank yous to give out this month. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another book haul, this time for August of 2023, guys. A huge, huge month as far as the generosity that continues to just come in on this channel, guys. I, I can't say enough about it. It's, it's really amazing, and I hope you guys do believe how thankful I am that you guys continue to send me this stuff because it's really, really special. Uh, guys, I want to begin like usual, like we always do, by talking about those books that count. You know what they are. You know them. You love them. It is digital purchases on the old Kindle here. I did a video recently talking about like popular sci-fi books I'd like to read. And the first one on that list that I am actually reading right now is Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. Now, this is a book I didn't know a ton about, except when I did that video a while back about books that made me cry. The biggest response in the comments of a book I hadn't read was for Flowers for Algernon. So I said, I want to go ahead and give that one a try and see why does this just wreck everyone emotionally? So a little bit more speculative fiction than, than hard science fiction, but there are some things in there that I can see why it is classified as a science fiction book. And I'm glad to finally be reading it because, guys, this one was never, ever presented to me in junior high or high school like it seems to have been with so many others. So I'm glad I'm finally getting to it. Next up, guys, this is one that I just really heard about recently. I started reading The Passage by Justin Cronin, and when I went ahead and picked those up, I did notice that there is this new book out by him called The Fairy Man. So I went ahead and said, why not? Why not just go ahead and add that one there? Because at the point I had read so much of the, the passage, I was like, okay, I like him as a writer, so I think I can go ahead and trust getting his new book, which I've heard mostly good things about. And last up, guys, I have a ton of books by Anthony Ryan. I've never read a single one. I've been I've been putting off Blood Song forever because of how many people have told me that that trilogy is just such a disappointment with that third book. To the point where I've had people be like, just read Blood Song. You can treat it as a standalone. But I said, I think 2024 is going to be the year I finally, finally dip into some Anthony Ryan. And that's why I picked up this Covenant of Steel series by him. This is uh, what the Pariah, the Martyr, and the Traitor, a completed trilogy. I've been talking to a lot of people I trust. And there's a lot of people on my Discord right now reading the Pariah and they have great things to say about it. And I, I was talking with some friends that uh, know what kind of grimdark I love and they're saying they think that this would be more up to my speed than some of his other things. This would be something a little more that I do love. I was like, is it better than Mark Lawrence? And they're like, he's not like Mark Lawrence at all. I'm like, good answer. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. So uh, yeah, 2024 will be the year I finally dip into some Anthony Ryan because uh, like I said, sometimes you just know an author is going to work for you. Because I remember I had like, uh, what did I have? Seven John Gwynn books before I'd ever even read one. Uh, same here with Anthony Ryan. Now I have three different series. I think I got like 10 books of his. So uh, I am hoping that he does turn out to be an author that I do like because I do have plenty of books by him to read. How about some physical purchases, guys? I did go ahead and pick up a couple things for myself. Another one that was on that popular sci-fi that I want to read is Canticle for Leibowitz by uh, was it Walter Miller Jr. Uh, this is one that I feel like I'd never really heard about before I started this channel. And I'm like, oh, this book has a huge legacy. How have I never heard about this? I love post-apocalyptic stories. And this is supposedly one of the best of them. So uh, very exciting. Uh, it's about, uh, I, I guess, where... You know, after the apocalypse has happened and these monks are trying to preserve history, the little bit that is left. So that sounds very interesting. But a lot of people told me this has like incredible world building in it. And that's good for a, a post-apocalyptic book. They usually skip that part of it. They would say, yeah, things went to hell, you know, and that was a long time ago. So I, I, I'm interested to see what he's got there. I kind of mentioned it before, guys. I did go ahead and pick up the Passage Trilogy by uh, Justin Cronin. This is a book series I had heard a ton about. When it first came out, I think, and then it kind of disappeared. But every time I talk about The Stand or Swan Song, I would always have someone saying, you, you probably check out the Passage Trilogy. I think you'd like it, post-apocalyptic. There might be vampires in it. It might be something you're into. So I said, why not? I'm about halfway through the Passage right now. Uh, it has a very interesting uh, storytelling method. Uh, so basically, it's like, hey, if you don't like the way the story starts, wait. And it's going to change. So it's uh, one of those books I can see why it's divisive for so many people. But everyone that has finished a trilogy says it's so worth it. They, the journey is so worth it to keep 
up with it. So that's what I am going to do. And that's why I felt safe buying all three of the books. Got a really great deal on Amazon for all three of those. And then recently I also did a video for self-published authors I'd like to try. And one of those was Dragon Mage by M.L. Spencer. This is a book that I have heard nothing but unanimous praise for. Uh, I think I have her Ren Wars books on my Kindle before, but this one was one I said, hey, I don't I don't have this one. Why don't I go ahead and get that? Because that sounds like it's really, really great. Uh, Ryan Cahill has been really, really high on this book as well. And uh, yeah, I think that guy knows his Dragon Fantasy at this point. So I'm quite happy to uh, to give this one a try sometime. Uh, within the next year or so, I'd like to give that one a try because that's another one. Like I said, I have not heard a single bad thing about it. And I'm all about now... All out of nowhere, I'm about supporting self-pub because uh, there's a lot of great stuff out there that I feel like I have been missing. How about some stuff from some authors next, guys? Now, like I always say with this, guys, a lot of these I don't know anything about. I have encouraged the uh, self-pub authors to, if they want to send their stuff to me, I'll try to get them out there and raise awareness for them. So I'm going to drop a link down below if you guys want to check some of these out because I'm having a feeling that you're going to like some of them if you do give them a chance. First one is Beginning of Arrogance by Brandon Cole. Is it Brandon Cole? Brian Cole. Sorry. I know a person in real life named Brandon Cole. That's why I did that. So sorry about that. So uh, yeah, again, I'm going to put these links down below if you guys want to check some of these out. This is Exile of Zanzibar by Daniel Maidman. hope these are focusing. It's always so hard with these glossy covers. And then I got Blank Sheet by Eric Dilworth. We had some nice emails back and forth, I thought. Uh, this is Che Quest, or I'm sorry, Chase Quest by M. Ray Roberts. That looks kind of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what made me think of that. And next up, we have The Gilded Kingdom by C.J. Irwin. I don't know why I said it like that, but hey, here we are. Blood Brothers. This is by Paul Antonio Azar. If I'm saying any of you guys' names wrong, I do apologize. I try. I try. But, you know, if I never hear them out loud... I'm not really sure. This one I'm probably going to say way wrong. This is Forged by Pain by Bohan Milo, Bilos, 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 Bijan, Bojan, Bilos, Bohan, Bios. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, Springside Harvest, guys. This is by J.D. Mitchell. Looks like Gargoyles. You guys remember Gargoyles, the cartoon? And lastly, A Star of Ash, A Child of Magic. This is by Parker James, I do love that. It looks uh, it almost looks like Shirky from the Berserk manga. That's why I, I'm kind of getting that vibe out of that. Although I'm sure it's nothing like that at all. But like I always say, guys, I encourage self-pub authors chase your dreams. That's something I always encourage because all those authors we read now, guys, all the time, constantly. There's those authors that you're like, that's a day one read for me. At one point, they were an independent author. And so I always encourage those people to chase their dreams. Shut out the haters, guys. Do what you do. And thank you so much for sending them to me. I hope I can help raise some awareness and get your book in some people's hands. How about some books from some publishers? First up, I have Llama with a Gun by Seth uh, Augustine. Not Augustine, Augustine. This is actually an arc. I don't know when this comes out. Has it got a date on it? Sometimes they have a date on the front of them. Uh, I guess not on this one. Uh, next up is The Siberia Job. This is by Josh Haven. This looks like a thriller, but I don't know. It looks like every one of those like Jack Carr books. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. So I'm not really sure what these are about. Uh, the Monte Video Brief, or is it Monte Video? Monte Video Brief. This is by J.R. Uh, Galunter. 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 Monte Video. I think it's Monte Video. Uh, this one actually did. This came from the publisher, but I talked to Jeremy a lot. Jeremy's all. Uh, this is his series, uh, book one and two of the Common, his sci-fi series. This is uh, what Stormblood and Blind Space. I've actually talked to Jeremy a lot, and he's the one who wanted to send these to me. Uh, but since he's not in the states, he had to get in touch uh, with his publisher here in the states to send me a copy. So thank you very much, Jeremy. I am excited as hell to give that series a try next year. And guys. I have something that I know you guys like almost as much as me. What is that? Mystery box. I opened I opened it and I opened it. I took a peek and realized that it was a mystery box. And I said, I'm going to wait and I want to do it on this video. I just now saw that. I didn't even see that when I first opened it. Uh, this is from Astra. Here we go, guys. Mystery box. Let's find out what is inside. Oh, we got a letter and some straw. Okay. Let's see what's inside here. We got... Hi, thank you so much for supporting great science fiction fantasy. Apply this a closed bundle of goodies from Doll Books, a best-selling urban fantasy author. 
Shannon McGuire. Okay. I got more more letters. Okay, let's see what else is in here. We got looks like a poster. Or is that a map? It's a map. Alright, we gotta open it because it's a map. It's a fantasy fantasy book channel, guys. We gotta open maps when we get them. That's a big, big deal. I don't want it to fall though. Yes, we do have a map. Good job. That's a good start. I love a good map. We got a sticker. We got a pen. It's like a looks like a dragon tear from a from Wheel of Time. And we have oh oh sorry another pen another pen in here. And then we got the book hidden down below. I think there's actually a third pen. There is. There's three pens in here. I'll take those out of the plastic and take a closer look at them. There's two books. Two books hidden in the straw. There's a fourth pen. My goodness. They're all different too. Okay, so let's see here. We have uh, Sleep No More and The Innocent Sleep. So I think these are part of the same series. Don't know anything about them since I just opened this up just now. Looks like they both come out in October. They got the dates on the back here. So uh, I'll drop those down below. Uh, let's take a look at those those pens because I'm curious why there are four different ones. Okay, yeah, they're very pretty. They're very pretty. Uh, this one says save the date. I don't know if you guys can see these at all. We got the teardrops like I talked about. And this one says again. So I don't know. Maybe these are, make sense in context with the book. But thank you to Astra and uh it's shannon 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 not sure if i'm saying your name right uh for sending these it's a very very pretty thing and i do love a good mystery box so guys how about some things from some viewers here i got some very very interesting stuff and some of it is good ranges from oh that's thoughtful to oh my god are you serious so uh let's take a peek at those now first i got a nice letter from this gal named Shale. She runs an Etsy store, uh, Gifts by Shale. She wrote me a really, really nice letter and said, basically, uh, you know, I, I know you get so many books, so I wanted to send you something that wasn't books. Well, she does run an Etsy store where they make these handcrafted frosted glasses that are very nice. Uh, and this one here actually is going to be my spooky season mug, I think. Yes, that's very, very nice. And she also said that she wanted to send something for me and my wife. Uh, so she said these two like handcrafted journals. Now look, I don't journal, but my wife does. So uh, she's already got the purple one because uh, purple happens to be her favorite color. So she went ahead and snatched that up. But this, I thought maybe I could use this as just like a notebook for when I say, hey, I'm making like a top something list and I just jot it down on a pen of paper. This looks like this could be something for that. I don't know, maybe I'll get in touch with Jared. Jared uh, Henderson, he's the master of journaling. So maybe I'll ask him about how I can implement that into my reading plans here. But thank you, Shale. That's very, very thoughtful of you. And uh, I really do appreciate it because these mugs are very nice, guys. So like I said, I'll, I'll drop a link to her Etsy store down below if you guys want to pick one of those up. Got a couple of birthday gifts I feel like I should, I should bring up because I thought they were very, very nice. At this point, every birthday, everybody's like, I already figured you had everything you need, so I didn't send you anything, <laughs> which is fine, which is fine. I got enough in here. Uh, with me, guys, at this age, a birthday is just another day. I, I, I No, I was on vacation. I was going to say, usually I go to work, but I was actually in the Caribbean this year. Uh, these are from Caitlin, one of my patrons. Uh, she is very, very awesome because she sent me Brave New World and Carl Sagan's Contact, two books that were also on that popular sci-fi that I like to read. So I've read 1984, I've read Fahrenheit 451, Brave New World always seems to be the third part of that trio of speculative fiction of that's getting a little too close to reality. So I feel like I do owe it to myself to get that in there. And then Carl Sagan, like I said, I, the only thing I've read by him was just, you know, astrophysics books. When I took astrophysics in college, took two years of it in college, and it was just, you know, it was hard science books. This is a little bit more of a story. I know there's a very popular movie that came out about it, but I never saw that movie. So there we go. Carl Sagan, one of the smartest human beings, I think, ever to live. So I would definitely be interested in diving into that brain and seeing what he does with a little bit of a, a narrative story. These are from Steph, another one of my patrons and has been with me a long, long time. Steph, you are the best. She sent me book one and Jen Lyons, uh, God, I forget what the series is called, but this is Ruin of Kings. It's a five book series. I, I think it's done. It was originally gonna be a trilogy, then it was four and now it's five. You know how I feel about that, but these books are all very, very sexy. And I'm glad to get the first one in there. And she also sent me a mug. And you know how guys know I do love me some coffee mugs. I also love me some Gone with the Wind, as does Steph. Uh, Steph is right there with me, and that being one of her favorite books of all time. And she sent me, after all, Tomorrow is Another Day, a Scarlet O'Hara mug. And I feel like when you are drinking out of this, you're going to give about 110% less Fs 
every single day because you're going to be channeling your inner Scarlett O'Hara. And as you guys know, she puts up with zero shit. So I think that, that can be a nice motivating factor. So thank you, Steph. Thank you, Caitlin. That's very, very nice of you. I do have one more that I got for my birthday from Madison. So Madison did get to go to HowlerCon. I did not get to go to HowlerCon, even though I had planned to until I realized, oh yeah, I'll be out of the country at the time. I cannot make it to Oklahoma. So Madison got me some gifts while she there. She got me this really awesome Howler hat. So that's really awesome. Thank you. And a Peerless Gold Beer. This is done by Lit Escalates. When I was doing my my spoiler talk, my last one for Lightbringer with Howler, uh, Howler Pod, uh, Aaron and Ben were both actually drinking these because they got to go, because of course they got to go. But uh, I do hope I get to go to HowlerCon next year and or whenever the next one is. I don't know if there's going to be one next year. And uh, obviously, uh, I hope I can be a part of it because I would love to be a part of it. She also sent me this. Um, this is the book that, or the little pamphlet, I guess you call it, that Wyatt Earp actually wrote about Doc Holliday, gave to him on his deathbed. It's actually been replicated word for word. And it's actually even in his original handwriting and stuff. Really, really cool read. Like if you guys watch Tombstone, you saw him hand this. Yeah, you can read this in a coffee break it's not that big of a deal but it's really really cool to see how close those two men were and obviously guys i am a huge huge beetle maniac so madison got me another hardcover of beetles material i say another because guys i have like 12 beetles hardcover books and i read all of them because i'm a beetle maniac and i can't get enough so thank you madison these are all super super thoughtful birthday gifts and i hope to see you on these booktube streets again here very very soon got a couple miscellaneous things where i talk about this this ridiculous thing i got here uh, i did get a mystery postcard now it uh it, i believe it came from Derry, maine and it does say your hair is winter fire january embers my heart burns there too so i mean i guess ben hanscom sent it right and it just came to, it came to me by accident but that's very cool. I don't know who sent it to me, but thank you. Uh, this is great. Uh, it being my second favorite book of all time, my favorite Stephen King book ever, obviously, that's something that's very, very special. So thank you. I don't know if that's your handwriting on the back or if they sell it like that, but uh, that's very, very neat and very well done. I got sent chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'm, I do that NGL thing on Instagram where I answer like anonymous questions. Someone said, I sent you some chocolate. And I said, this might be the wrong year for it because it's been 108 degrees every single day in Houston. But they did show up and my kids have been eating the hell out of them. They taste like if Kit Kat was made out of coffee. That's what they taste like. But you know, I'm I'm trying to get back on the ball. So I only have one to test out, but we got several more. The kids do, do love them. Uh, so thank you to the view, uh, another viewer. I don't know who it is that sent that one to me, but thank you so much. This is from Levi. Uh, sent me a, a handmade uh, Mike's Book Reviews bookmark. Always cool. I love the effort. I love stuff like that, guys. That's really, really cool. I love when people send me artwork. That's that, that's something else I never get tired of. I got uh, I got a card from Judy, but I can't find it. Where is it? Here it is. Judy, my pen pal in Cali, in California, uh, and a Starbucks gift card. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for the kind words about the uh, the the tragic loss that we had in our family. I do appreciate uh, that nice little letter you sent me. And guys, I do have one more thing. I'm still wearing this, ain't I? I do have one more thing to talk about before I go. And it's, it's, it's kind of big. If you haven't been watching the channel the past week, you might have missed it. But I feel like it definitely needs uh, some special attention outside of that little short that I did because this is a oh my God kind of gift. I made a video a while back about most aggressive fandoms that I've encountered since running this channel. And one of them, I feel like I need to retract it because look, I know every fandom has, you know, that tiny minority of shit hills that chase everyone away because they just act like jerks. And it's, it's not necessarily gatekeep, but if you just don't think it's amazing as they do, they just, they're completely nasty to you. And that happened to me with One Piece, right? And I was just like, I was recommended that it would not be something for me by people who know what I like and they're really big manga fans. So that's why I said I probably wasn't going to read it. And I got just like attacked in that video I made for it. So I've been saying that I didn't think that I would ever read One Piece, but I'm glad that other people like it. Even my kid likes it, you know? So I was like, it's not a big deal. Well, they refused to take no for an answer, guys, because I got sent this $150 box set of the first 23 volumes, and it was anonymous. Don't know who it's from. Uh, they're calling themselves YouTube Algorithm because they're saying that, like, booktubers don't actually like One Piece. They just make One Piece content because it conquers the algorithm. Well, uh, for all the people that are like, 
just read it. I got to tell you guys, catch up. I'm on volume seven right now. I have been reading it. I have been watching the show and I've been liking it for the most part. There's not a ton I have wrong with it. I say I won't pretend that the animation style is for me, but I'm having a good time with it. I'm having fun. If I'm having fun, I can look past some of those goofy things. But I don't know if it was after I said I had started or not. They sent me another one. They sent me, <laughs> they sent me the next set, also from the same person. I don't know who this is. I don't know if it's a group of people. I don't know really what's going on. A lot of people, I, I, I joked that I thought that maybe Murphy Napier put them up to it. Uh, we talked and she's like, no, it's nothing that I did. So uh, I'm, I'm believing that it's a, a pool of fans who have gotten together and got, because these are not cheap. These are stupid expensive guys. And the fact that you guys sent me two of them, uh, it, it, it's amazing. The least I can do is try reading these and having a good time with them. And I am, uh, like I said, I'm watching the Netflix show having a fun time with my kid. Uh, he, I tried, I had like people being like, are you reading it with your kid? And like, no, he can't get over the right to left thing. He, he's like, no, I all I've read is American comics. I, I can't, I'm not, no, let's just watch the show together. And he watches the anime, he plays the, the game on his tablet and stuff. So he's been teaching me things while we've been watching it and while I've been talking about it. i be like, oh yeah, in the, in the uh, you know, in, in the manga they do this. He's like, yeah, I know, I've watched the cartoon. <laughs> so, so he knows. So uh, I, again, thank you so much. This is just incredibly kind. And like I said, I was wrong. I was wrong about the One Piece fandom. And if I could go back and remake that uh, most aggressive fandoms one, I would definitely take them off because I feel like they're very passionate and they want people to love this as much as they do. I have things like that, guys. I am like I am like Jehovah Witness knocking on people's door about Red Rising. So I get it. I, I get that. When you really love something, you want someone else to love them. Uh, for those viewers who are concerned, no, I'm not going to become the One Piece channel. That's every all the comments I get from people who aren't into manga are like, you're going to become the One Piece channel like everyone else. No, but I do want to talk about them because I am having a good time with them. And I think I, I can see why the fandom is so passionate about it. And I'm in the part right now where everybody's like, oh, I've just got to get past this part. And then it gets really good. I'm having a good time already. You know, I, I really like the, the, the main five. I, I'm sure that crew gets bigger, but right now it's just five of them. It's the five that's on the on the front here, you know, so I, I'm picturing, actually it's just got four, it doesn't have Sanji on here, but uh, I, I'm liking this crew so far. So uh, yeah, I think it's one of those things if you're not taking it super, super serious, and from what I understand, over time it does get less goofy and more serious, but then it'll get goofy again, but you know, you care more because you're invested in the characters. And I can see that already. So I'm happy that they refuse to take no for an answer and send me these. Again, I can't say thank you enough. This is one of the kindest gestures I've ever gotten on this channel. And it's, it's really, really awesome. Uh, now I'm like, hmm, I really do like this. I'm going to have to spend out some big money to get those other two. Because <laughs> there's two more of these out there, apparently. But uh, yeah, I'm having a, a, a lot of fun with it. And I'm not just saying that because someone spent, you know, $250 on me. Not at all. I, I'm just... I, I always said I never say never on these things. Uh, but I did let it cut in line before 20th Century Boys because of this. And it was just perfect timing with the show coming out. My kid had already sold me on watching the Netflix show with him, which was really good, by the way. So uh, it's just it's just perfect timing. So again, thank you. But guys, that was my book month. Uh, my book haul, all my additions to my library this month. I have no idea where I'm gonna put those giant box sets. I have no idea. I'm completely out of space in here, but I will find a way. So guys, did you add anything new? to your library in August. I would love to know. Do you have any of these that you'd like to talk about? You'd like me to show you some more? I can do that. I'm sure someone's going to say, hey, do an unboxing of these One Piece box sets. Uh, but, you know, hey, that's what shorts are for. So drop in the comments, guys. Let me know what you got. And I will talk to you there. <laughs>